All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Today is Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. And before we start with today's news, I would like to... Uh, formally apologize because I do not want to be feeding disinformation to any of you folks. And again, uh, I wouldn't be any better than the mainstream media crappy uh, networks uh, or outlets if I didn't correct myself when I made a mistake. Now, yesterday in my reporting, I said that I, I referred to Chechnya as Chechnya. I made a big mistake confusing Chechnya and the Czech Republic. I would like to apologize to the people who have listened to this. I would like to thank a gentleman by the name of Sterling Thompson in the comments of yesterday's YouTube video for correcting this for me and pointing this out. I would like to apologize again for those that sat back and go, whoa, what's Dave saying here? With that being said, again, thank you so much, sir. I promise to uh, do my due diligence next time around so this does not happen again. I Totally my fault. I brazened right over it when reading the point and I should have been much more uh, uh, diligent and much more careful. With that being said, I appreciate you guys correcting and let's jump right into it. So first off, Southwest Airlines has scrapped a plan to put vaccinated employees who have applied for but haven't received a religious or medical exemption on unpaid leave starting uh, by a federal deadline in December. They scrapped the plan. Okay, folks, I want to make that very clear. They scrapped the plan to put unvaccinated employees who have applied for but haven't received any type of exemption on unpaid leave. They scrapped it. That's good to see. Right. It's good to see. Now, what's interesting, too, is that we notice as well that the Biden administration, when they filed for this vaccine mandate with large corporations and what have you, from my understanding, they jumped right over the CDC. They jumped right over the FDA. Hence, one just this was just one of many reasons why a handful of executives on the FDA board um, uh, stepped down. They, they felt that they were being pressured and they said it. Now, again, that's been covered up very quickly and I want to be very careful saying that. But again, we're going to report it as it is. And I, I, I'll be honest with you folks, from my own personal opinion and perspective, I like what I see here because I don't, again, I, have, I am not anti-vaccine, let me be clear. But my perspective is people should not be coerced into it. Very, very simple. They should not wake up every morning fearing they're going to lose their jobs, right? The next thing is that the FBI has raided the Washington, D.C. home of Oleg Deripaska, a Russian oligarch, a Christopher Steele client and founder of Basic Element, one of Russia's largest industrial groups, according to NBC and a handful of other outlets. It's very simple, very simple. Uh, NATO kicked out a what they claimed to be, I believe, eight individuals that they claimed were espionage spies on behalf of Russia, and Russia then closed their uh, office pertaining to their uh, NATO correspondence and, and, uh, and operations. And then this happened. The FBI did this this morning, from my understanding. Again, it's a chess game. You guys see the big picture? Tit for tat. It's a chess game. So... Again, I don't know what else I could say to that other than let's see how it plays out, truthfully. Um, this is one of those chess games where it seems like innocent people don't get involved. Again, this is how, you know, the the, 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 the ties and connections of power and politics and money tend to stem and, and branch off. But again, all having to do with the same sort of, you know, general group of, of, of pawns and bishops and horses on the chessboard, metaphorically. The next thing is that the UK has reported 223 COVID deaths, the highest daily number of deaths since March. 79%, almost 80% of the population aged 12 and over, older, excuse me, is fully vaccinated. I'm going to leave that there for you folks. I'm not going to comment my opinion. I think those that are, you know, members, especially, you know, my perspective, but I'm, I'm just going to leave that there. I'm not, I'm not going to try to, I think we hear enough COVID crap all day. Let's just leave it at that. Make of that as you will. The U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, will not enforce 20, uh, 29 CFR 1904's recording requirements to require employers to re record worker side effects from COVID vaccination. The reason for this is because they do not wish to, quote, discourage workers from receiving a vaccination or dissent, uh, dissentivize employers' vaccination efforts, end quote. It's unclear if the recording requirements are subject to change since OSHA will implement the emergency regulation on COVID vaccines as proposed by the Biden administration. That's scary. That's scary. I'm not even trying to be a fear monger. I'm not trying to be a bad faith actor with reporting this. Even if it wasn't a COVID vaccine, let's just say, I don't know if it was a vaccine. It was, it was penicillin, a new version of penicillin. I'm just, you know, hypothetically making something up. But let's say a new version of penicillin came out. What are you going to, OSHA is going to ignore that because they don't want to, de, uh, um, they don't want to discourage people from getting the shot. I mean, it's interesting. Again, I said this in the, the Telegram group chat this morning for those that are not members. I just want to, it's something that kind of nags me. Again, the quotes that these that these outlets put when they say, you know, very rare side effects, but they put quotes around very and rare. It's because their lawyers are telling them you get covered legally in that aspect. Again, look what happened with the lab leak theory. 
they had to quietly print retractions. And when I say they, I'm talking about mainstream media outlets. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Washington Post, NBC, you name it, CNN. They had to quiet. CNN adjusted their headlines. Washington Post actually made retractions and very quietly apologized. But the reason why I'm bringing this up ultimately, folks, is because again. Give or take, from a, according to the NIH, 50 to 80% of all antibiotics that are used on humans, 50 to 80% of them are also reappropriated and used for livestock, for animals. So does that mean that, you know, for example, if someone in my family takes penicillin, I should make a YouTube video or I should make an episode on the podcast, on the show, that saying, you know, oh, you shouldn't take penicillin because they use it for animals. My point is, again, same thing with the Joe Rogan, Sanjay Gupta, Ivermectin situation. Iver, putting aside that Ivermectin won a Nobel Prize, it was made for humans, then reappropriated afterwards for livestock. So again, and there's two different versions. This is my problem here. Anyways, let's uh, enough of that stuff. The next thing is that Trump is suing the January 6th committee and uh, the National Archives. He filed a lawsuit to block the release of documents to the committee, and, uh, challenging Biden's decision. Trump legal filing calls the House panel a, uh, quote, illegal fishing expedition openly endorsed by Biden, and it is attempting to damage the republic itself and the citizens of the United States, end quote. Depends how you view it. I'm not trying to take Trump's side in any way, shape, or form. I really do believe it depends on the perspective that you take pertaining to this, and the reason I say that folks is because ultimately again we've seen how many bad faith incidences have occurred in the sense that whether republican or democrat we got to be fair right which is why i said in yesterday's news episode i don't i don't know what i am anymore in terms of a self-political self-defined individual or ideological individual they, they they do things out of all for the sake of this for the sake of that but we all know what that's not really the case so again please forgive me if I have to question this, please forgive me that, you know, CBC Edmonton, which is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, their Edmonton division, just the other week put out a mannequin to, to, to on TV saying, oh, look at how bad it is in the ICU. They used a mannequin. They then apologized. They said it was an editorial error. How come their YouTube and Twitter account hasn't been temporarily suspended? This is why people like that. This is why we don't trust these things. This is why when Biden does this stuff, people believe it when Trump says that he's trying to, again, uh, when Trump says that he's trying to... Uh, Please forgive me. Uh, create an illegal fishing expedition. You look at Russia Gate. I mean, again, Trump is not a, a clean guy per se. If you look at some of the records, allegedly, if you believe that. But at the same time, he's not exactly wrong in this case. If you ask me, especially how with things played out with Russia Gate, what really happened? You see what I'm saying, folks? I'm sorry to sort of ramble and tie all those things in, but it's the same concept. If you ask me, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. The next thing is that Rachel Levine has been sworn in as the first openly transgender female four-star admiral in the U.S. Look, I'm going to be completely honest with you folks. Unless I'm missing something here in terms of perspective, it doesn't bother me as long as they do their job. As long as they do their job. And, you know, if they do their job, if, if they do their job as an admiral, it doesn't bother me. If they don't flaunt it, if this, doesn't, if this does not create disruptions within the military, it doesn't bug me. Now, again, the question is, will it? I don't want to sit here and extrapolate and speculate. We can argue both ways. So let's see. Truthfully, let's see what happens. I promise to follow up on this. The next thing is that a conservative German publishing powerhouse, Axel Springer, uh, completes a purchase of the U.S. media group Politico. It'll, this will be interesting to see if there will be any sort of, again, uh, alternative perspectives taken at Politico relative to the official narrative constantly being pushed, not just having to do with COVID, but having to do with many other things as well. But again, Europe is very close particularly, you know, Germany, Italy, France, very close with the U.S. So it's, it'll be hard to say. I don't want to, you know, say for certain if, if things will change. Maybe things will lean a little more conservative. But again, I'm not trying to say that because I lean more conservative in my personal views. I'm just saying that, again, it doesn't matter if they lean in more to the left or even they jump to being more on the, the conservative side of things because if they're pushing the same pro-war narratives and things like that, what difference does it make? Two sides of the same coin, right? So the next thing is that Again, that can extrapolate into a whole other conversation, but we'll, th that can be debated generally. The next thing is that Jen Psaki said today at the White House uh, press conference that the backlog at U.S. ports is because more goods are being ordered. And I quote, people have more money and the wages are up, end quote. Really? Really? <laughs> you folks, I'm Canadian. You folks in America, you tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm being serious here. I heard, and again, I hate to say I heard because, you know, nowadays people say that all the time, but allegedly the cost of a shipping container about 18 months ago, I think, was two, three grand a container. It's now at about 30 grand, if I'm not mistaken, roughly. That's the, but that's the jump. Even if I'm off by a little bit, look, think, look at that jump, folks. Uh, the next thing is that the UK Parliament has extended the Coronavirus Act by another six months without a formal vote. 
The A's have it. The act grants the government emergency powers. A simple motion giving consent to the continued use of the emergency legislation was passed without a formal vote by MPs in the chamber. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? I, again, I'm not in the UK. I know some of you are. And I thank you so much for watching and all that and for supporting. What's going on with that? I, I mean, I, I imagine to see some protests pertaining to this. Another six months? Six. I mean, we all know what they're really doing here, but... Like, Jesus, if you're going to try and push it like that, at least make it every three months to make it look like, oh, you know, we're trying to end it, but we're not. You know what I'm saying? I'm not siding with the politicians. I'm just saying if you're going to if you're going to do this to people, don't be so blunt about it. You're just hammering people. You're metaphorically stomping on them. The next thing is that Iraqi protesters have demanded an election recount in Baghdad. Well, OK, before I go on, I just want to be clear. That's my opinion. I, I could be wrong. I know you folks like to hear it. That's why I say it like that. So. The next thing is that Iraqi protesters demand election recounts in Baghdad. Hundreds of Iraq's uh, Hash, Hashd al Shabi supporters, pardon me if I butchered that, supporters protest against fraud and call for a recount of the October 10th vote. This signals a lot of things to me, folks. First off, my thing is this. I have never been to Iraq. I know some people that uh, are from Iraq, some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Again, it has to do with the regime, not the people. If the people are saying they want this to happen and there's no fraud or anything and those at the top know it there's nothing wrong with doing a recount right but now at the same time what i also see from this is look at this from a global perspective folks think about the fact that people all around the world are questioning the legitimacy of their election of their elections excuse me whether at a local level federal level you name it how many times can we point back at trump for this i don't bl i don't I, I wouldn't say so and the reason i say that is because again people in general are fed up with the system in which they're living in not necessarily the system in theory but the system in practice the system in reality you see what i'm saying here folks because in theory the system should be working beautifully right the next thing is that a water crisis has plagued tens of thousands in northeast syria uh, aid organizations say poor aid organizations like ngos say that poor water infrastructure and climate change exasper are exacerbating existing humanitarian crisis in northeastern syria i'm sure there's crises there but this, again, I can't help but notice as well the push for, you know, climate change and yada yada. So, again, we have to be careful because what YouTube's doing now. But, you know, those that are members know very strongly the, 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 what we look into as it pertains to that. The next thing is that the Beirut blast judge summons ex-ministers as pressure mounts. The Beirut explosion investigator Tarek Bitar continues to pursue political leaders despite Lebanese politicians trying to remove him. Uh, you know... What do the people want? What do the masses want? It's as simple as that. I mean, at this point, gosh, back and forth back with this Beirut investigation. Again, the, the corruption is, is there, in my opinion. It, so what do the people want? Other than that, I, I don't know what else could be done here. The next thing is that the uh, violent Israeli raids in occupied East Jerusalem wo wound dozens, according to Al Jazeera. Now, again, having to do with what I said yesterday as well, too, Al Jazeera, we have to be vigilant. So, again, dozens wounded and arrested in Israeli raids on Palestinians at Damascus Gate and in surrounding areas. Here's the thing, okay? I'm just going to say it straight up. The, the Mossad, Israel and all that, and the American media, mainstream media... They, they they tend to and again this has nothing to, to do with the Jewish people or the Israeli the Israeli people the people of Israel I'm speaking of the of the 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 Zionists the 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 I wouldn't even say Israeli if you will uh, anyways it's a different situation I'm just doing my best to make it to to ensure that I do not project or seem to project any form of racism or xenophobia or anti-Semitism of any kind I want to be very clear but it is a fact that there are a lot of Jewish businesses and what have you that have direct connections to the Mossad, you know, mega group and all that stuff like we talk about in the members episodes, in addition to, you know, uh, to the Mossad and the CIA. It's generally speaking, North American and Western media favors that of, you know, what Israel does in, in general, it, whether good or bad. Whether good or that's not for me to say, which is why it's hard to report on this. But here's the problem. When an outlet like Al Jazeera reports on this, we have to remember too that Al Jazeera is also considered a, um, in a lot of regards, a disinformation outlet for the the country of qatar now the reason that's said on wikipedia on on the north american side of things and european side of things is because again they they, they can't the west and you know and the, their alliance their allies cannot control this outlet so they want to be vigilant of that and they want to say oh you know it's a disinformation outlet so don't you know it's pushing a message from the government of qatar so don't look at it could be true could not be could be a bit of both right so again just like when al jazeera is reporting this here's the thing for me it's about human beings whether you're palestinian or israeli or jewish doesn't matter to me i have to be on the ground 
and I hate to answer things this way sometimes, but I got to be on the ground. I got to see what's going on. You're being pushed. It's a, it's a human being pushing this human being out of their home unreasonably. Again, then, then I can comment on it. And I'm being genuine, folks. I'm, I'm really not trying to dabble around this. But the next thing is that Mali asks Islamic body to open negotiations with Al-Qaeda. Malian authorities have previously endorsed the idea of talks and have quietly backed local peace deals with the fighters as security deteriorates. Again... Again, it, it, as long as nobody dies, if these groups are going to have conversations, I mean, nobody in terms of innocent people, women, children, as long as they have these conversations, let them do, let them have their conversations if it means more peace or more stability. You know, I, it's unfortunate to say, but it, it, what at this point, it's taken the lesser of two evils here or the lesser of two shitty situations, if you will. The next thing is that over 100 million people in Africa are threatened by climate change, allegedly. The WMO report warns 1.3 billion people remain, quote, extremely vulnerable as the con a continent warms more and more at a faster rate than global average, end quote. I'm going to leave that there just like with the COVID stuff. You folks think for yourselves in that regard. I'm, not, I'm, I'm being genuine. I'm not trying to say I'm, this is not my issue, but with COVID and climate change now with uh, the next thing is that according to American amnesty attacks on freedom of expression are devastating for public health censorship misinformation during the pandemic have had a quote devastating impact end quote on access to information uh, amnesty says yeah that goes both ways so don't give me that shit you know that's all I have to say about that you know you guys you guys aren't haven't exactly been the the, the cherry pickers of you know truth telling either so the next thing is that the US which is why no one trusts either side you got to speculate because the, the government and the media are lying so much. So the next thing is that the U.S. said the Taliban will have no access to Afghan central bank reserves. The deputy United States Treasury Secretary Wally Adeyemo on Tuesday said it is essential to maintain U.S. sanctions against the Taliban. Again, this comes down to the view, globalistic view versus nationalistic perspective. Should we be in there? Should we even have a say at what goes on in there? Unless you're on the ground there, unless you have family there, Right. The next thing is that the death toll rises as heavy rains batter northern India. At least 41 killed and dozens missing after heavy rains triggered landslides and flash flooding. Um, this is unfortunate. I can't, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, controlled weather things for depopulation to also put, push the climate agenda. But I don't want to start creating a big conspiracy here on, uh, or a proposal, if you will, uh, on the on the Kraken episodes. But you folks, I think most of you know where I'm leading with that. Uh, the next thing is that detect and detected and blocked Indian submarine incursion. Pakistan uh, military says attempted incursion by Indian vessel occurred on Saturday night, but it was blocked and it was detected. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, that might be true. It might not be. Again, this is strategy. This is a chess game. This is also an, inf an information war between two, two, two countries. What the media says, what they say, what they don't say, what they don't comment on, what they say is happened, but really did, you know, same thing. Um, <clears throat> Again, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll follow up on this. The next thing is that the U.S. Congress seeks to compel Steve Bannon's testimony in the January 6th probe. The House Committee plans to issue a criminal referral for, quote, contempt of Congress, end quote, against top political advisor to Donald Trump. In my opinion, folks, Bannon, I got to be honest with you. Quick little fact, a side note about Steve Bannon. He allegedly told Jeffrey Epstein, he goes, I was afraid about a, two years ago or three years ago. Um, he said, I was afraid of you during the Trump campaign. You were the only one that could have really done any damage. And Bannon, uh, sorry, uh, Epstein allegedly told Bannon and replied, said, uh, as you should have been. Because, you know, allegedly Epstein has dirt on the Clintons, on Trump, and you name it, right? So, again, I, I can't help but think, look, Bannon is smart. He's smart. The media portrays him as some like, you know, evil, you know, uh, some evil mastermind or strategist. I could tell you right now, in my humble opinion, please don't take this as, you know, uh, as, as your own if you have a different perspective. But I know you folks like to hear mine. Hillary Clinton is 10 times worse than and she's done things 10 times worse than when ba Bannon did. It's possible this subpoena is just getting back at Bannon for, again, doing uh, truthfully. A lot of things fell in line for Trump, granted, but doing such a good job strategically as well. I know that Bannon and Roger Stone don't get along and things like that, but again, um, we'll, we'll see what happens there. This could be a nothing burger. It might not be, so we'll see. Uh, I know that he did get a pardon from Trump, I think, but, you know, um, yeah, so... It's, it's, it's a chess game, guys. It's a chess game. The next thing is that Colombia is responsible for kidnap, attack, and rape of a journalist. The Inter-American Court of Human Rights issued a ruling holding Colombia's government responsible for kidnap, torture, and rape of a journalist, Jeanette Bedoya, in 2000. Again, here's the thing. The question is, yes, you can find them guilty, but who are you going to go after? Who are you going to go after? It's like trying to sue a corporation. At most, the person at the top gets some house arrest or some slap on the wrist, and that's it. So, again, it's like when Big Pharma gets attacked, same idea. 
I mean, it's good to see that, you know, there's vindication in this case, presuming this is legitimate. But at the same time, what did, is anyone getting arrested or what? Oh, no, it was 21 years ago. Ah, you know, different, you know, different administrations. Yeah, so like these guys. Yeah. The next thing is that Brazil's assets sink on fears um, on fears that their aid program will hurt the fiscal rule. The new social program aimed to help Brazil's poorest will give handouts of as much as $72 per person, according to people familiar with the matter. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Again, things go fl fluctuate all the time. I'm not even a comment on that. that. I'm not an analyst. That can go into so many directions. God knows. The next thing is, I mean, if the people are getting something and getting money and they need it, good, good. Again, I'm not saying that's the, the total sol uh, solidified answer or solution for the long term, but for the time being, sure. The next thing is that the Ecuador president declares state of emergency over drug violence. President Guillermo Lasso orders the mobilization of police and military in the streets as he struggles to curb drug-related violence. Okay, again, if the people are with him on that, so be it. The next thing is that Greece pledges to link Egypt to European Union's energy market. Uh, the connection would happen through an underwater cable that carries electricity across the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, again, there could be some intelligence operations occurring there. I'm sure there are, but... If this is good for, you know, infrastructure, so be it. Let's see if there's anything that comes of this, right? The next thing is that Russia has, again, they suspended their NATO mission after the staff were expelled. We know this, excuse me. The next thing is that hundreds of political prisoners fired, uh, freed in Myanmar, excuse me, after amnesty. Joyful scenes as families reunited, but experts say international community needs to keep up the pressure on the coup leaders. Okay, again, calling for things may in fact work. Maybe sometimes it won't, so we'll, we'll see... Um, but we'll see what, what goes on. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say in this regard. It's great to see people being freed. And uh, if they want to be freed, they should absolutely be, absolutely be freed. The next thing is that North Korea has test fired uh, uh, test fire suspected submarine launch ballistic missile. The launch comes as diplomats try to nudge Yang Yang back to the negotiating table over denuclearization. It's a chess game. It's a chess game. So I don't... They're trying to get them back to the negotiating table. North Korea is saying no by doing... This is another sign of that by firing a rocket. It's a chess game. The next thing is that Pornhub's parent company has settled a lawsuit brought by 50 women who said they were victims of a sex trafficking operation. The woman said that Girls Do Porn, an adult content provider uh, called Girls Do Porn, uh, coerced them into having sex on camera and lied about how the material would be shared. The 50 woman had sued Pornhub, alleging the firm knew of the allegations but continued a partnership anyway. Terms of the settlement were not made public. If they got money out of it and they're happy with the settlement remaining private with regards to more details and intrinsic analysis, then so be it, right? Now, again, I'm not trying to dismiss this as, oh, you know, uh, they got their money, so so be it. This should have never happened, presuming it happened the way in which it, this occurred. It could be possible as well that maybe some of them were BSing for money. Pornhub didn't want anything to do with this. It was bad publicity. They settled. Bit of both, maybe. Hard, you know, these things, again... It, the, these things happen all the time, right? The next thing is that a top U.S. college football coach has been fired for refusing to be vaccinated against COVID-19. Washington State University sacked Nick Rolovich, its highest paid employee, and four of his assistants for failing to meet a vaccine mandate. The mandate means all state workers in Washington have to be fully vaccinated against COVID or lose their jobs. Mr. Uh, Rolovich, 42, who earned $3.1 million a U.S., which, equals to, which equates to $2.25 million a European pounds a year, had applied uh, uh, 2.25 million euros, excuse me, had applied for a religious exemption from the mandate. I'm just going to leave that there, guys. I'm just going to leave that there. The next thing is that the Polish Prime Minister Matus Morai Mora Wiecki, excuse me, if I, pardon me if I butcher that name, has accused the EU of blackmail in a heated debate with European Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen over the rule of law. Even the European head of commission chief sounds like she comes from royalty with her name, Ursula von der Leyen. Jesus. Anyways, I'm not trying to butcher, like, de, um, defame her name or any, or slander her, but I mean, yeah, yeah. The, it's a, the clash in the European Parliament follows a top Polish court ruling that rejected key parts of EU law. Mrs. von der Leyen said she would act to prevent Poland undermining EU's values. In response, uh, Mr. Morawiecki rejected the, quote, the language of threats, end quote, and accused the EU of overstepping its powers. Again, when I said, yeah, yeah, it was because of, of uh, what I was reading. It wasn't that I was trying to slander her name. But, yeah, I mean, it, with respects to the EU trying to use blackmail, wouldn't surprise me one bit. 
wouldn't surprise me at all. So again, with that being said, folks, that's all for today. We'll catch all of you for another crack in tomorrow, presuming there's enough viable news that we deem to be reported on. If not, we'll catch you for another crack in again, you know, Thursday, Friday, the usual. We got a public episode coming tonight in addition to a members episode coming for the members as well very shortly and an early release. Cheers.